on March 30th, 2012. This is pulling you number 77 and 78, Day 3, Part 1. Hello, Bridge friends. This is Michael here at Bridge Hands, and welcome to Day 3 of our next episode, learning about everyone's favorite bid, the beloved preempt. And yes, in this lesson, we will certainly incorporate lessons learned from our prior sessions, including suit quality, losing trick count, cover cards, and self-sustaining suits. Of course, preemptive bidding has lots of details. So, for better or worse, here at Bridge Hands, you can count on us to start off with basics and drill down with all the nitty-gritty details to help you bid effectively and consistently. Now, in part one of our preemptive bidding journey, we will start off with an overview of suit quality and self-sustaining suits relating to our beloved losing trick count with several Bridge Hands here at Bridge Hands. On part two, we will delve deeper into partnership bidding styles, weak suits that may or may not be self-sustaining, environmental factors that influence our bidding style, as well as bid and play more bridge hands to reinforce our lessons learned. Then in part three, we'll dig deep into effective bidding skills in the face of preempts, both by you, your partner, as well as those insidious opponents. While we normally do not get into bridge conventions. For those who preempt aggressively, we will discuss several methods, including low-level slam masking bids. And for those frisky bidders out there in bridge land, in episode number four, we've expanded the lesson to show what professionals do with trouble hands. You know, those hands where you are tempted to preempt with spread honors and shapely hands, maybe even with a five-card suit. Whether or not you're an aggressive bidder, we'll risk opening Pandora's box, noting examples where the pros are comfortable making light preemptive bids with lots of examples. Now, even if aggressive bidding isn't your style, it's illuminating to consider how hand shape, intermediate body cards, and the rank of a long suit can make a significant difference in various situations. So, what's not to love about making an obstructive bid with a long suit and less than an opening hand, right? Well, like everything in our bridge bidding arsenal, there is a time and a place for every bid under heaven. Now, unfortunately, without partnership agreements and following a disciplined approach, you and your partner's care and feeding of preemptive bids may or may not work in your favor. So are you ready? Okay, let's jump right in. Well, aside from our classic high card point and distribution point formulas, on a recent lesson, we've started our quest to incorporate self-sustaining suit valuation to improve our bidding. In polling unit number 76, we learned the ins and outs of help suit game tries and counter suit game tries. In a moment, we will highlight how losing trick count and cover card theory helped us to accurately bid games. Of course, our current lesson focuses on preempts. And in future lessons, we will discuss reverses, strong opening bids, cue bids, strong jump shifts, as well as more on type 2 doubles. As we've discussed in our recent lessons, losing trick count and cover cards can greatly help accurate partnership bidding. Well, first off, we need to have an 8-plus card trump fit or a self-sustaining suit. Then. Aces, kings, and queens in supported suits are our friends and are not considered losers in three plus or longer card suits. Generally, the fourth card and beyond in a suit are not losers either, provided we have entries into that hand and that would likely be the dummy. So, losing trick count minus cover cards equals losers as six losing trick count minus three cover cards that's three losers, and three losers equates to a major suit game. We also get extra Trump-like 5-4 suits, working queens, and jacks to count for extra length and extra shape, especially when we have short suits such as singletons or voids. In polling U number 76, we learned how opener can explore game when partner makes a sign-off bid in their major suit. So, after one heart, two hearts, when opener has six losing trick count but needs help in clubs with two and a half cover cards, responder will be happy to bid game. 
In the countersuit bidding scenario, we start off the same, but in this situation, when the responder can't help in opener's rebid suit, but has extras and help elsewhere, then responder can make a countersuit in that suit. Let's briefly look at a few hands. Well, okay, let's take a look at a couple bridge hands here. So, for the hand on the left, the opener begins by bidding one heart, and the responder will sign off bidding two hearts. With a partnership fit and six losers, one in spades, one in hearts, one in diamonds, and three clubs, then the opener would rebid, in this case, three clubs with three losers in that suit, asking for help in that suit respectively. Now, the responder has three cover cards and is more than happy to accept a four-heart game that should make unless all three finesses lose. One finesse is 50%, one of two is 75%. Well, okay, for those of you who are bridge perfectionists, it's 76%. Those who appreciate that that missing honor may fall on a repeated finesse attempt in the same suit. So, one finesse in three is over 87% chance. Very nice odds. Now let's take a look at the countersuit game try. In this case, once again, the opener on the left begins in one heart. And again, responder signs off in two hearts, promising a three card fit. The opener does have lousy clubs, making a three-club game try once again. The opener needs help in diamonds as well, but begins with the lowest ranking suit. Not to worry, here's where the countersuit game try comes into action. While responder also has crummy clubs, three losers here, look at the diamond suit. It has no losers at all. So responder rebids three diamonds, making a countersuit game try. And that's all the opener needs to hear. Assuming responder East has three cover cards, game is in the bag, a done deal with these holdings. While we use losing trick count and cover cards on the last two hands, the concept was based upon suit fits. Not one player having a self-sustaining suit on their own. In this instance, we can use suit quality formula to determine if a long, strong suit in one hand is good enough for that player to independently use losing trick count hand evaluation. And as the bridge quip goes, what do you do when you have an eight card spade suit? What do we call that? The answer? Trumps, right. Seriously though, we shouldn't be too optimistic assuming our partner will always have support for a so-so six-card suit. At least initially, let's assume that our partner has no more than a low singleton in our long suit. Now, if partner balances by freely bidding no trump, then by all means, count partner for a doubleton. Let's take a look at self-sustaining suits and the suit quality. Beginning with the fully self-sustaining suits, by definition, that's a suit with not more than one loser when partner has minimum support. And while shorter suits may have limited loser, when it comes to using losing trick count, hand evaluation, we need to first pull trump, and that means we need to have a long, strong suit to round up all those stray trump held by the opponents. Well, okay, here's the suit quality formula. The suit quality is equal to the sum of the useful trump honors and the length of the player's long trump suit. And for a suit to be fully self-sustaining with not more than one loser, we should have a suit quality of 10 or more. Now if the suit quality of the suit is 9, it's considered a semi-self-sustaining suit. For suits with a suit quality of 9 or more, by all means, go right ahead and begin counting your losing trick count calculation even though partner might have a singleton. Well, all right, let's take a look at some self-sustaining suits. Ace, King, Queen, seven times, equals better than three honors, plus seven in length equals 10 plus for the three toppers. Ace, Queen, eight times, is two nice honors, with a finesse chance plus eight in length equals 10 here. Note that if the Ace, Queen, tennis 
Even if the partner holds a worthless singleton, we still have a finesse opportunity and can take seven tricks when the king is on side. Now here's a great suit with chunky honors. While this is only a five card suit, with the ace, king, queen, jack five times, we have a suit quality of four plus. Honors plus five long equals nine or more, especially if partner bids no trump, such as indicating a doubleton in the suit. With king, queen, jack six times, we count a suit quality as four honors plus six long equals our magical number of ten. Moving down the honor ladder, this time we hold queen, jack, ten, nine, seven times. So our suit quality is three honors plus seven long may equal ten, but myth missing the ace and king, we should probably downgrade unless you have reason to believe your partner holds an honor in the suit. Regardless though, with a suit quality of nine or ten, with the nice nine spot that we have working in this hand, by all means, go ahead and count your losing trick count. Well, uh-oh, when missing three top honors, this is not the time to consider a self-sustaining suit. So forget counting losing trick count here. Despite the eight-card suit, incidentally, experienced bridge players realize that when they have a very long suit, they can expect others at the table to either have a long suit or at least two suited hands. Ditto with short suits. When you have a void or a singleton and see one more in the dummy, don't be too surprised when one or both of the remaining players hold similar hand patterns. Okay, now we'll take a look at some semi-self-sustaining hands, those with a suit quality of nine that may lose two tricks. With ace-queen seven times, the suit quality is two honors plus seven long equals a suit quality of nine. Now, like before, life is good when your right-hand opponent holds the king in your trump suit. Holding the king-queen jack six times, the suit quality is three honors plus six in length. Again, the suit quality is nine. With queen-jack ten nine six times, our suit quality is three honors added to six long. Missing both the ace and queen, we might be inclined to downgrade one trick, yet the addition of the nine is most helpful. Nope, I don't think so. With only the queen, ten, and out, this is definitely not time to start counting your proverbial eggs. No chickens will come home to roost unless you are lucky enough that your partner has good honors and several trump in length. Don't count losing trick count here. Conversely, with three toppers in a long suit, holding the ace, king, queen six times, arithmetically only has a suit quality of three honors plus six in length. But you are too good here for a semi self-sustaining suit status. Even if one opponent does hold jack fourth, you won't lose more than one trick in that trump suit. Now looking at these hands, except for number four, with good honor bound semi self-sustaining suits, by all means go ahead and begin counting your losing trick count to determine your losers knowing you can rebid your suit when partner has a singleton. Besides, even when partner subsequently pulls the contract to no trump, you'll be quite proud to table your nice running suit as a dummy. To recap, without a fit in our long strong suit with a suit quality of 10, we anticipate that our proposed trump suit will have one loser except when we have all of the toppers like this holding. The same goes when we do not immediately have enough top honors to call it a semi-self-sustaining suit. When we rebid a questionable six-card suit lacking critical two of the top three honors and partner belatedly shows two-card support by raising our suit, now we can merrily proceed with our losing trick count dance and start counting losers. Did it when we have a semi-self-sustaining suit and partner balances in no trump. When the bidding suggests that partner holds a doubleton in our semi-self-sustaining suit, off we go counting, losing trick count, probably figuring that we just have one loser. Ready? Okay, let's start our journey counting losing trick count. On scenario number one, with three honors plus seven long, suit quality is 10. Moving over to the losing trick count, our losers are one in spades, one in hearts, 
two in diamonds, three in clubs equals seven. Now, if partner hasn't bid, we would merely preempt in three hearts, regardless of our vulnerability. And if our partner opened, we would certainly not stop short of a four heart game. But while this hand has nothing to do with any kind of a self-sustaining suit on our own, should partner surprisingly open one heart, then using the law of total tricks with our nice hand shape, not normally a 5-3-3-2 shape, but here we have a 5-4-2-2, two, two, or it could be a 5-4-3-1, some kind of a shapely hand, and considering the 10 combined trump, we certainly would preemptively jump to four hearts, raising our partner's major suit to game. Recall the bridge player's axiom here, slow shows, extras, fast denies, extras. Okay, in our next hand, the right-hand opponent opens one diamond, and you hold a fistful of spades, eight of them, with four toppers, adding up to a suit quality of eight plus four is 12, this time our losing trick count, zero in spades, one in hearts, one in diamonds, three in clubs, totaling five. Figuring partner for two tricks and our five losers, we should have an easy game. So now is the time to make that obstructive bid and preempt to four spades straight away. Partner opens one club and this time our spade fistful of eight isn't quite so hot. Yet we have two honors and eight long, but our suit quality is less than 10, missing the ace and king as well as the 10, despite our nice spot cards. So rather than let the opponents discover their big heart fit, again, let the law be our friend and immediately jump to four spades with less than six high card points and no primary honors in our huge suit. Okay, we're just about ready to head over for the bridge table, but first let's take a look at the hands by themselves before we begin bidding and play. Here our suit quality is equal to three honors plus six long equals nine. We have a nice semi-self-sustaining suit. Our losing trick count losers are one in spades, one heart, one diamond, and three clubs. Six losers are a nice hand, right? Looking at our south hand, here again, our suit quality is three honors plus six long, but with three toppers, add one, so our suit quality effectively is 10. Moving over to our losing trick count, we count three spades, another three hearts, no diamonds, and one club. Like an average opening hand, here we count seven losing trick count with typical values that we would have for an opening hand. Over to the west hand, switching it up, this time, we hold a terrific club suit with 150 honors. Our suit quality is equal to 5 plus 6 long equals 11 plus the toppers. And how about our losing trick count? Two spade losers, one in hearts, three diamonds, none in clubs. Aha! Another nice six losing trick count holding, although, as we'll soon discuss, we have possible problems with this hand. Over to the north hand. Our north hand, we have a suit quality of three honors plus six long equals nine. A good semi-self-sustaining suit and spades to boot. Losing trick count losers are one in spades, two hearts, two diamonds, and two clubs makes seven losing trick count. A reasonable hand and always sweet to hold the master suit. Okay, it's time to head over to our virtual bridge table and begin bidding bridge hands preemptively or not. And note, while each of these hands are the type you might individually be dealt, you won't necessarily see all four hands around the table that each have 9 to 11 high card points, each with a six card suit. But it could happen. Rather, the primary purpose of this exercise is to illustrate suit quality, semi and self-sustaining suits for each player, and to give us each a chance to practice our new hand evaluation techniques. So, okay, let's go. See you there. Hello, Bridge fans, and welcome to our virtual bidding table here. We're going to take a look at four hands that illustrate our suit quality, self-sustaining suits, or semi-self-sustaining suits, and take a look at some preempts going around the table. Now, these hands are not necessarily illustrative of the types of hands that you would see at your table. Might be, but we have each of these four hands about 
9 to 11 points. So we're going to be able to take a look at each of the four hands, and they'll all be preemptive values, and see how we would bid them. But still, it's a good exercise. We'll get a chance to get some work out on some preempts. So let's go. First of all, we'll take a look at the east hand, and they will have a preemptive hand, perhaps. In hearts, it's king, queen, jack six times. That's six high points there. In spades, ace, double, ten. Another four makes ten. Small diamond and four small clubs. That is ten points. Perhaps two distribution with a nice heart suit. How do you want to play this? Do you want to open it at one heart or two hearts or pass? I don't think we want to pass, do we? Some will want to open it one heart. Others will open it two hearts. And outside, ace or king is not necessarily a bad thing when we're preempting, but these hearts are pretty good. Let's take a look at our losing trick count. First of all, let's take a look at our suit quality and see if we can count losing trick count. For our hearts, we have three of the top hearts, that's three, and a suit length of six is nine. That's a semi-self-sustaining suit. So we can go ahead and start counting losing trick count right away. Nice suit too, isn't it? Okay, so we have one loser in hearts, we have one loser in spades, one in diamonds, that's three, and three in clubs, that's six losers. That's actually a good hand, isn't it? I don't think I would open it two hearts, but for the sake of argument, this person chooses to open two hearts. Let's take it from there and see where we go. Down to the south hand, we have a 6-3-3-1 three, three, in diamonds, ace-king-queen six times, 9-8-7 in hearts, spades, 8-7-6, and in clubs, a singleton nine. Well, we probably would have wanted to open that with a weak two, but now with a two heart, we don't mix preamps. If there was a weak suit that was bid in first seat, we don't want to go ahead and bid a weak jump shift, which would be three diamonds. Two diamonds would show an opening hand or more, and we certainly don't have that with only nine high card points and two distribution. So with a two heart preempt, we would pass. With a one heart bid, we then might want to bid three diamonds. Interesting, yes? Okay, any rate, let's say it's two hearts and a pass. Over then to the west hand, it's a six, four, two, one. In clubs, beautiful suit, ace, king, queen, jack, 10, eight spot. That's 150 honors there. That's 10 high, definitely two distribution. Self-sustaining suit? Yeah, we hardly even have to look at it, do we? We have the top five honors, that's five. We have seven long, that's another seven. Excuse me, six long, that's another six. Six and five is 11, plus one for the extra suit as though we needed that. So yes, very self-sustaining, more than 10. In diamonds, jack, 10, nine, eight. A little surprising considering that there is six diamonds in righty, but these things do happen. So we have another one point there. Um, Spades, 10, 9, double 10, and a 10 spot in hearts. Well, at least we like the fact that we've got an honor in our partner's heart suit. Any honor is worthwhile when partner has bid it, a major, or in this case, made a two-level bid. So what do we want to do there? Well, it looks like we're going to want to make a call. We have basically an opening hand ourselves, 11 high and some distribution points. So we'll bid three clubs. Now our forcing bids, as we'll talk about in a future session, raise only non-forcing. We bid two no trump, we bid a new suit, that's a forcing bid. The only time it's not forcing is when we raise partner suit to three hearts. So we'll go ahead and bid three clubs and ask partner to further to describe their hand. Maybe they'll have some extras that they'll care to share with us. Okay, over to the north hand. In north it's a six, three, two, two. In spades, hey, we have the master suit here. King, queen, jack, six times. That's six high. In hearts, ace three times. There's another four makes ten. Two small diamonds, two small clubs. Looks somewhat like the east hand, doesn't it? That had the other major suit with king, queen, jack running with an outside ace. But this time, we have a tripleton with our ace, and we have two doubletons. We'll speak more about the value of tripletons versus doubletons in a future lesson. Okay, so we have 10 points and two distribution. We like that we have the master suit, and we'll come to that a little bit later. Um, but we don't have a bid here after three clubs. We know that 
There's two hearts and three clubs of forcing bid, so we'll just pass. Okay, back now over to the east hand. Our partners bid three clubs, a forcing bid. Um, what do we want to respond with now? Well, if we rebid three hearts, that says we have nothing else to say. We have just a minimum hand. If we bid anything else, if we can support partner's suit with three, usually that's a major, we can do that. Or if we have some other feature to show, we can go ahead and bid that an outside ace or king. Not one that's in higher rank than our heart suit, though. That might get us into trouble. But look, we have four card club support. And our partner ostensibly has five. Could be more, as we can see over here. But we don't know that. So we're going to go ahead and bid four clubs. It gets us past the Reno Trump. It's true. But our partner has bid three clubs. And we're going to go ahead and be forward going and bid four clubs. A pass now by south, back to west. Hmm. Well, our partners made a preempt, so we don't expect too many outside controls. Maybe one outside control. So um, our losers, if we were going to be in five clubs, we've got three losers in diamonds, two losers in spades, one loser in heart. If they can cover heart and one other, we're still going to have three losers. We wouldn't want to be five clubs. But perhaps we have another bid. Anything else you can see there? Well, how about if we bid four hearts? Yes, we only have singleton. Six one fits do not make the world come to an end. Sometimes we can make game in a six one, and we always like it when we have what? Right, an honor. And we do have an honor. Yes, it's a ten, but it is an honor. And any honor when our partner has a six card suit is helpful. So our partner has shown club support. That's good news. Maybe too good, because if they lead clubs, there could be a roughing situation, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So we'll go ahead after four clubs by our partner. We'll bid four hearts and hope for the best. It's either that or pass. Okay, so it's four hearts in the east hand. South is on lead and south. What do you want to lead here? Ace, king, queen, six time and diamond. Three hearts, three spades, and a singleton club. Well, if you lead the ace of diamonds, as it turns out, they're going to make the contract. If you lead a heart, their trump suit, they're going to make the contract. If you lead your singleton club, boy, don't people like to lead singletons? Well, in this case, remember, that was our left-hand opponent's suit. Yeah, I suppose if our partner has the ace, they would play it and come back. We get a rough... Singleton leads don't oftentimes bear much fruit, especially when the opponents have bid the suit. And that's the case here. In this case, the only setting lead is a spade. Now, that's not an easy lead to find, but we'll go ahead and show you why that works. If we lead a spade, we'll lead the top of nothing. A nine comes from the dummy over in the west hand. Over north, we'll play the jack, the bottom of a touching sequence and an ace will win over in the east hand. Okay, we're going to go ahead and have a plan. We're going to see that we want to pull trump. We can't immediately start pitching on the clubs because we have what? A 6-4, that means they're 2-1 or 3-0, so we immediately want to start playing hearts. We could play the king the top of a sequence, but maybe just to be a little bit obtuse, why don't we play a jack or a queen to kind of make it think that they shouldn't take the first round because we don't want them switching to clubs. So let's play a queen of hearts. We go ahead and play a 10 singleton from our hand. And north, you'll want to take it with an ace. And now you need to come back with your plan. After you win this trick north, what do you want to play? Well, there's only one setting lead, and believe it or not, it's the clubs. Can't be played on trick one, but if it's played now, you've got a winner. What's going to happen is you're going to have to get your partner in the south hand with the rough. And the only way we can do it is to play a club. A little bit double dummy play, not easy to find, but here's how it works. A club, club, the nine of clubs, win with the ten. Okay, we now want to play another heart, but we don't really have a way to get to the hand and play a heart right away. And what can we play? Well, we don't want to play a club, that's for sure, because they... Both follow. That means somebody can rough if they get in. So we'll probably want to play a diamond, maybe a jack of diamonds. A jack, and it's won by the south hand, probably the bottom of the sequence here with the queen. And now, south, if you play a spade, you're going to get good dividends. Now, you know your partner played 
the jack, a bottom of sequence, was taken by East the ace. So East should not have another high card honor, or else they wouldn't have bid two hearts. It would have bid one heart. So we'll go ahead and play another spade, the only setting play. Spade by the dummy, overtaken by the queen, a five by the east hand. And now if we play another club, well, you can see what happens. There is a rough over here by the south hand. That makes four tricks, down one. So reviewing the hand, we can see that probably a lot of people will open this one heart with a six loser. I would recommend it, but this person went two hearts. Okay, some people will. Can't make a bid here in south. Three clubs was the correct bid. Pass. Four clubs. Beautiful bid coming back. If it all passes out, you'll make the contract. If you go to four hearts, it takes perfect play on behalf of the defense with these holdings. May not be quite so bad at your table, but we just wanted to illustrate sometimes these leads can be critical, and they're not always easy to find. Okay, I hope that helps for hand 1A. Let's take a look at each of these other hands now and see what they would bid if they were in the first seat. Okay, see you there. Well, Bridge friends, I hope you are getting warmed up on the first portion of our lesson, learning about suit quality, preempts, losing trick count, and cover cards. We have three more bidding variations to discuss on these hands. So let's break the rest of this lesson off to segment 1A. After going around the table with each player first having a shot to make their bids and respective play for their hands, we will then proceed to part two, three, and four as we dig deep, deep, and deeper into the fascinating world of bridge preamps. How deep, you ask? Well, if you're up to it, on the final segment, we'll even kibitz professionals bidding a few dozen baffling hands. But not to worry, learning preamps has several twists and turns, so let's take our time and enjoy the bridge scenery. Okay, I look forward to seeing you over on the virtual table over on the flip side. Bye for now.